Okay, so I'm going to step through um, the workflow that Mark just described in his slides, um, again, using ArcGIS Pro, and show the different uh, workflows and uh, through different types of data that, uh, that you may have. And so um, oftentimes when uh, you get LiDAR data, it comes as, as what we just call raw, raw LiDAR data, meaning it's, meaning it's unclassified. And uh, within ArcGIS Pro, we can actually change these different renders to show what kind of data we, we are working with. So if I uh, go to the Appearance tab um, and hit the Symbology, I can quickly switch between these raw classified points to view just the elevation values. I can also see the, the first return, the last return, and all the other points in between. And then we can all also look at the intensity of, um, of the response from the ground to the sensor. But what we want to focus on here is uh, the classification. So the, the ASPRS uh, last spec has a, um, a set of classes for each type of point that you can go in and classify. Um, ours are at the moment classified as value of zero, which means they've never been classified. And so this is pretty common uh, deliverable from, uh, from vendors to a customer to be able to, to get to deliver this type of uh, unclassified data. And so we recognize that as a problem for many of our users. So we established a couple of different workflows for extracting building footprints from unclassified uh, point clouds. And so the workflow that I'm about to describe and that Mark went through in his slides are a series of steps one through six uh, tools that you have to run to be able to generate these different types of um, products. And so for the sake of time, I'm not gonna click through each one of the tools, um, but I'll show you the results. And so the first step really involves taking your point cloud and converting that to um, a DSM and a DTM. And so what you're looking at now is uh, the DSM, which shows uh, the ground as well as all the terrain, including the, uh, uh, the vegetation and the buildings. And so if we perform a swipe against the DTM, we can now see as close as possible just the ground surface. And so these two layers themselves are very important in this workflow in that they um, are the inputs into doing the mathematical, um, uh, basically the map algebra of subtracting the two from each other which provides a lot of information, including uh, building height, um, canopy height of the vegetation, and so forth. And we also use that as a way to extract out the building footprints. So those are two very important inputs. I'll go ahead and uh, go back down to the point cloud. And then from there, um, as we go through the steps of the models, we can then start to generate some of these different products. And so the first product is um, this DTM DTM composite, which sort of you can start to now start to see the building footprint outlines. Uh, but there's also some other stuff that it might pick up, like um, some vegetation. And so through the series of steps, we we go in and eliminate some of the noise. And then from there, we can generate uh, what we call the draft polygons. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's extent of those polygons are following uh, the extent of the pixels, which is not a very accurate representation of the building footprint. But as we go through the model, we can start to refine that a little bit more. And then what we end up getting is more of a generalized footprint layer uh, that closely follows along um, the outer extent of the building. So all this is possible out of the box without any need for uh, classified LiDAR data, we can simply go through these tools and, and get what we think is a, a nice representation of the building footprints. So that is the workflow for generating building footprints if you have unclassified uh, data. Um, so with that, we also provide tools for classifying the data yourself. And so we also recognize that 
Um, it is important to have classified LIDAR data uh, from any other aspects of working with LIDAR. And so within Pro, there's a full uh, set of tools for actually classifying the data. So I'll just show one example. So I've got my point cloud, my raw point cloud uh, selected here. There's a dedicated classification uh, tab and I can click the tools that I, um, the drop down that uh, show me where the classification uh, tools are. And these are ordered in the way that you would wanna run them. So the first step would be in this case to classify the ground. So I can click that tool and then click the run button and that'll process um, and look at all the points in my data set and try to determine of those points which ones uh, represent the ground surface. So that's taken into consideration a variety of things, including the first return, the last return, and um, how high or low the points actually sit themselves. All right, so that's completed uh, the first run. So you, I now have uh, all the points that are in shades or the color brown uh, represent a ground surface. So I could continue to go through the rest of the tools where I classify the buildings, uh, classify overlap, classify noise, and then classify by height. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I'll go ahead and just uh, show the results here. So what we usually get when we're done through that, uh, when we're done with that workflow or that process is something that looks like this. So now we have the uh, points in red represent uh, buildings or structures. Uh, the points in green represent um, uh, vegetation. And then, of course, the brown points represent the, uh, the ground surface layer. And uh, with these uh, different points, we can start uh, performing some very interesting analytical uh, capabilities here. So first of all, we can just simply query. So if I just want to see the ground surface, I can see the ground. If I want to see everything above the ground, I can do that. And if I want to see all of them, I can, can go back to that. Um, I can also change the different symbologies like I showed earlier. And then from there, we can generate other types of products that may be used in our analysis, including um, contours and DSMs and DTMs like we showed earlier. So we'll just let that quick process. And so once uh, that's complete, uh, we can then take that information and then web enable it. And so let me show you the results of a project that we did for a county in uh, Virginia. Um, this is a little web application and the uh, panel on the left shows the workflow that I just showed when you have classified data. The panel in the middle shows the workflow that I showed with unclassified data. And the panel on the right shows a workflow that was contracted out to um, a vendor to actually do heads up digitizing of the data. And so as I kind of move around and compare the three, you can see I get very similar results um, no matter what workflow or process that, um, that you choose to, to, to go through. And another part of the workflow that's built into this is extracting out the 3D content uh, from the building footprint layer. So with the building footprint layer as an input and the height of the points from the point cloud, we can now view that in 3D. And so here's the entire county of Fakir. And so I'll just slide through some of the bookmarks. And so over the web, we can view that 3D content, um, the building structure, as well as the point cloud that you're seeing here. And we'll go ahead and zoom in. It even captures the different uh, pitches on the roof and the different uh, shapes or what we call roof forms. In addition to that, we can see uh, the number of floors of the building and those are highlighted by those gray lines there. So we're able to capture a lot of valuable information that we can use beyond just the building footprint layer. And I'll show a couple more here. And it also captures um, buildings that are not rectangular. So in this case, um, we've captured some of the round uh, buildings. And then finally, beyond just building structures, we can all classify uh, bridges. 
um, that go above and below ground. And that's going to conclude my demo for uh, the LiDAR feature extraction. And Mark, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over. Thank you.